Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Once more, Pixar has decided to take us on a trip to the universe of Cars, a beautifully realized world in which nothing about it makes sense when you hold it up to the slightest amount of scrutiny. In this universe, there are no humans, and yet every car character has a door handle and seats. Who are they for, hmm? In this third outing, we can add to the list cars that complain about another car's smell, even though cars have neither sweat glands nor noses, and mini forklifts who can somehow play an electric guitar. But, but, you know what? After the frustrating Cars 2, which cast all of the cars in a James Bond spy movie for no apparent reason, at least Pixar is returning to telling a story about cars who have actual car-related problems and do actual car things. The story of Cars 3, basically about an athlete who deals with age and obsolescence lessons is conventional, sure, but, but, you know what? There's really not much wrong with that, especially in the family film. So let's cut it some slack a little bit. At least they're not getting into gunfights. You know what I mean? I will say right off the top that the biggest strengths of this film are the visual delights to be had. This is, as always, a fascinating world to simply behold, rich with detail and fun little in-jokes, and there is certainly no shortage of high-octane thrilling automotive action both on and off the major speedways. The 3D thrills here are once again off the charts, and there's real magic to being immersed so fully in a bright and textured world. As for the characters that we share that world with, well, it's a mixed bag. Lightning McQueen once again takes over the lead role duty relegating Mater to the sidelines for the most part, to the delight of many, I'm sure. Personally, I never had a problem with him, but I can see how he could be grating on most people. But the new crop of characters that we get, now I quite liked the new trainer character, Cruz Ramirez, played by Cristela Alonso, but she could have been a little more well-defined, considering how important a role she ultimately plays in the plot. And the biggest disappointment is the character of Jackson Storm, who is all over the trailers and is ostensibly the main villain of the film, but by the end, you'll find he makes very little impact. Like, at all. Also, this new character called Sterling, who is voiced by Nathan Fillion, is a little difficult to pin down. He's the new owner of Rusty's, McQueen sponsor, and he seems to morph into whatever extreme the story needs of him from scene to scene. And that is the movie's biggest problem. The story that it tells lacks focus and drive. Uh, no pun intended. We think we're being set up for a sort of comeback story or a buddy road movie, or maybe even a love story until you remember that McQueen does kinda sorta have a thing going on with Sally back in Radiator Springs. She's also stuck in the wings for most of the movie. But none of these plot points are hit very hard, and the movie just sort of bumbles along with admittedly amusing detours until it arrives at a climax that just starts throwing twists and revelations at you that it didn't quite earn yet. Sure, you can go back and look and see where some of the groundwork was laid, but it all comes off as a little too little, too late, a little too quick, a little too cheap, and it has very little of that emotional impact that Pixar has been peddling so well. You know, that gut punch that you get when you've been particularly carried on an emotional journey of highs and lows to a place that just feels right. You know? But, you know, I talk about these things. I deconstruct them, you know, like a critic. Not like the intended audience, which is children. And, you know, the intended audience for this movie won't care. I barely cared either. Just sort of had a feeling that the story beats felt off. That the characters overall, their arcs weren't tracking properly, etc. I still had a halfway decent time. I still got thrills in each scene where cars were zipping around and flying through the air and smashing into each other at high speeds and in glorious 3D. And despite the fact that the world, the characters, and now the plot doesn't quite make sense when held up against close examination, the film was diverting enough in the moment to keep all of my questions at bay until after the credits had begun to roll. Therefore, I award Cars 3 a medium bag of popcorn. A very mild recommendation. If you're looking for a ranking, I'd say it's better than the second one, not as good as the first one, and proof positive that there probably shouldn't be a fourth one. Pixar has definitely done better, but when it comes to family entertainment at the multiplex, you also could do a lot worse. Oh, and the short film before Cars 3, entitled Lou, well, it's charming as hell, and to say anything more would be to spoil its magic, but it alone is almost worth the price of admission. So take that into consideration. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter, at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more, and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there, and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. Now, I'd like to hear your thoughts on Cars 3, and hey, what's your favorite Pixar movie? Let me know. In fact, I did a Pixar ranking video last year, and I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave them in the comments below, and take a look at my Pixar Movies Ranked episode as well. I will leave a link to that video in the description for this one. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel. Ka-chow!